to be living under a rock to not know about Farmog in this part of the world. Farmog is a Ghana-based manufacturer and retailer of ice cream and frozen dairy products, being one of the most enjoyed frozen products for the past 60 years of its existence, with their iconic products being the classic strawberry fan yogo, fan choco, and fan ice. In 2017, Farmog launched their mango version of the classic fan yogo, and the streets went wild. Everyone couldn't wait to get their hands on this new flavor. This showed the influence and great farm work had on the Ghanaian market with their products. Following up with new products like banana flavored fan yogo, peach flavored fan yogo, cocoa pine fan yogo, super yogo, fan gold, fan max, and many, many more. Originally started by a Danish entrepreneur and currently owned by the NAN, a French multinational food products corporation based in Paris. This video essay is about the Brocky story behind Farm Milk Limited. Sit back, relax, and comment down below your favorites. I'm at the station. Please, can you give me the direction? Oh, ask anyone. Okay, madam. Madam Panchy Peach. Yes, so far you go Panchy Peach. A Coso Road. Now, where is number four and Numde Avenue? Oh, number four and Numde Avenue. What the call? Hmm? So, front right, sharp left. Miss anyone by the roadside. Thank you. Hello, please direct me to number four, Numde Avenue. Ah, Numde, see, go side, then you curve. You will see some people there, then you ask them. But anyway, I can drop you. No, thanks. Walk how you go, punch your fish. And give me direction to number four, Numde Avenue. Go side. Thank you. Please, can you direct me to number 24 on the avenue? Go, sir. Keep going with the goodness of the new Fanny Yogo Panchi Peach. So cool, so good. This advert is FDA approved. I can take you now. I'm not doing anything. Eric Emborg was a Danish entrepreneur with multiple businesses under his belt. On a trip to Ghana, which was called Gold Coast in the late 50s, Eric decided to search for new ways he could expand his business in West Africa. After much research, he landed on setting up a cold store, which was very rare back then. But after much thought and deliberation with eight shareholders, Eric decided to branch out and establish the Ghana Milk Company in 1960. The primary aim for the company was producing and distributing fresh milk-based products packed in cartons. The need for quality logistics sourcing gave birth to the partnership between Danish sourcing and trading company Emidan which started as a supplier to dairy factories in Ghana in 1960 and later other parts of West Africa. Vendors were employed to distribute to schools, shops, department stores, homes and hospitals using container-carrying bicycles, popularly known as Long John bicycles. Business was ongoing, but unfortunately, sales dipped drastically for the company due to the fact that their analysis on the market was inadequate. During this time, a strong competitor from Holland, which dealt in the same dairy products such as the caramel tasting tin milk, was much more preferred since they tasted better and could be stored longer than fresh milk. The consumption of fresh milk was kind of new to many Ghanaians. The Ghana Milk Company was faced with the problem of not being able to sell its large quantity of products on the market. This led to a huge loss for the company and its investors. The Ghana Milk Company was forced to declare bankruptcy in 1962 after losing its entire equity. After the company had declared bankruptcy, Eric decided to leverage its remaining assets to secure a bank loan which he decided to invest into the company to have another goal at turning the company's fortune around. Rush our traffic. Or a great spot to enjoy the view. A hot day. Or a chance to get closer. The regular motions of work or a moment for ingenuity and unexpected creativity. Because when you look, there's joy to be found anywhere. And joy will find you. Fan Milk.
After the initial failure, most of the investors pulled out due to low faith in the prosperity of the company. So Eric offered to buy their shares, which they gladly accepted. Even after gaining the remaining shares, the problem that remained for Eric was how to approach the markets. And most importantly, what to provide that would actually sell on the markets. Things became tough for the young company. This led to a substantial amount of workers being laid off week in, week out. Just at the edge of collapsing, a concerned Ghanaian employee proposed a fantastic idea to Eric. It dealt with diversifying and producing chocolates, milk and ice cream products, and also supplying vendors with plenty of ice blocks as a way of keeping the products chilled for consumption. The employee promised Eric that venturing into this uncharted territory of the Ghanaian market would produce great profits for the company. Hereafter, the company decided to rebrand after a meeting between Eric and the executives. In a general meeting in 1962, a decision was made to change the name of the company to Farm Milk Limited because of the flavored milk products they would be producing. As part of the company's new direction, a unique corporate logo was introduced. After the rebranding, the company's fortune changed in a space of 18 months. Sales improved and the company gradually expanded and prospered on the Ghanaian markets. Tetequashi brought the best thing that ever happened to us, Coco. Good feeling whenever we see people enjoy fan choco because we know they are not only enjoying just the cocoa beverage but they are also enjoying a bit of great great history. Fan choco, great taste. My heart stirs when gin van ice refreshing. What can stop when I need to cool off? Van nice, so nice, nice, nice. So nice, nice. Enjoy for night. Nice. So satisfying. Good for children and adults abiding too. Because it's good for you. Nutritious, delicious, and that's how we do. Bye, nice. So nice, nice, nice. Bye, nice. So nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Shadi says she don't go up before the bros. My bros don't play the go 